How's it going everyone? This is GWR Studios, and today I'm proud to announce a brand new series, Sodor Profiles. Have you ever watched the Thomas the Tank Engine show and thought it looked pretty realistic? I can remember watching the show back in the day, and I used to think these were real trains, like they actually existed. Well, believe it or not, most, if not all of the Thomas characters are based off of engines that existed in real life. But it doesn't stop there. Even some of the classic scenes from the show are based off of real locations from British Railways. And what's even more crazy is that some of the crashes are based off of things that happened in real life. The man who wrote the original Thomas books wanted the stories to be as realistic as possible. Besides the fact that they were talking trains, of course. The Reverend wanted his stories to have some substance to them, so he based his stories off of real-life events and real-life engines. Some of these engines are still around today, while others have sadly been scrapped. Help! I'm choking! So in this series, I'm going to be taking a closer look at each of the Thomas characters, and I'm going to tell you more about them. What engines were they based off? And are they still around today? Well, to celebrate reaching 30,000 subscribers, I'm announcing this new series. And to kick it off, let's start with the number one engine, Thomas the Tank Engine. So first off, who is Thomas the Tank Engine? Well, Thomas is a little blue tank engine that lives on the island of Sodor. Thomas is a kind engine, and he usually gets along with everybody. But there are times he's a little cheeky, and he teases the other engines. Wake up, lazy bones. Why don't you work hard like me? Although Thomas is a hard worker, he sometimes gets himself into trouble. Cinders and ashes! But fortunately, his friends are always there to help him out. So what are some of the jobs that Thomas does on the island of Sodor? Well, in the very first episode, Thomas's job was to collect coaches for the bigger engines. But as the series continued, Thomas took on other jobs, including pulling passenger trains, pulling troublesome trucks, and even pulling the mail train. Thomas is undeniably the most popular character on the show. I mean, after all, his name is in the title, and he's also the number one engine. But what a lot of people don't know is that Thomas was based off of an engine that existed in real life. Now what I'm about to show you is the only existing footage of the real-life Thomas the Tank Engine. Over a hundred years ago, the London, Brington, and South Coast Railway created the E2-class steam locomotive. In this extremely rare video, we can see one of the tank engines in action. This is the real-life Thomas the Tank Engine. And although there's no face, it's not hard to tell that this is Thomas the Tank Engine. Another thing worth mentioning is, look at the background. Do you see those cranes? Don't they look similar to Cranky the Crane from the TV show? And look what Thomas is pulling. It's the troublesome trucks. <laughs> Only 10 of these engines were ever created. They were built between 1913 and 1916. Even the boat at the docks looks like the one from the TV show. It's amazing that this video even exists today. The E2-class steam locomotives were used mainly for shunting, but they would also pull short-distant freight trains. They even pulled passenger trains from time to time. These are the same types of jobs that Thomas did in the TV show. So you might be wondering, where are these engines today? Well, although the engines operated from the 1910s up until the early 1960s, they were ultimately replaced with diesel locomotives. The future of the E2s didn't look too bright, and by 1963, all of the E2s were scrapped. Not a single one exists today. Poor Thomas was so sad, he nearly cried. But the story doesn't end here. Although the real-life Thomas the Tank Engines were scrapped, a man known as the Reverend W. Audrey wrote a book called Thomas the Tank Engine. And as you can clearly see by this illustration, Thomas was based off of the E2 locomotive. The Reverend was so passionate about his storytelling that he even made a model train layout of the island of Sodor. To give you an idea of how much the Reverend cared about his series, here's an interview from 1962 where he's talking about how he created Thomas the Tank Engine. I had a railway background. Quite naturally, the interest transferred itself to my son, and when he was ill with measles at the age of three, it was most natural for me to tell him stories about trains. So when the Reverend's son was sick with the measles, he would tell him stories about trains. Little did he know that these stories would one day change the world. I invented names on the spur of the moment, Edward, Gordon, Henry, and so on. These ended up being some of the main characters on the show. Edward's Day Out, Henry in the Tunnel, 
And then there was another story based on a story I'd read in the magazine. This was the story of how Gordon got stuck on the hill and had to be rescued by Edward, the engine whom he despised. But once Edward had started him off, Gordon was able to go on fast and poor Edward ran out of steam and got left behind. And so there it was. The Reverend would go on to write 42 books about Thomas the Tank Engine and his friends. These books proved to be a hit, and by 1984, Thomas received his very own TV show, which would transform Thomas into a cultural icon. And although the original Thomas no longer exists, they build a new Thomas that you can ride. It even talks to you. Hello, I'm Thomas. Thomas has been around for over 70 years. Generation after generation has been changed by this little blue tank engine. He's a part of our childhoods, and his stories will last forever. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked this video, be sure to stay tuned for future episodes. Again, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you real soon.